Hi everyone, I'm Pastor Dave, try my better side this time. I am here to yet again present another sermon, this time on the topic of religion and faith. I do want to make a distinction between the two with regards to how people uh, obtain truth and how it affects the politics if you go from one perspective to another. Anyway, as always, I am just showing you my certificate of ordination. I am a pastor of faith, not of religion. I want to make that distinction. Uh, so today we're going to talk about how religion, how being in the, in the place of religion, how clutching to religion affects your ability to properly decide what's, what's necessary in a political arena. Whereas faith has the quality of discernment, religion has the quality of obedience. Your job is to simply obey the teachings of that religion. Where faith is more of a feel, it's more of that personal interaction. It's more of uh, you or your soul being in touch with the divine field, the spirit. And that affects your politics. If you are one who can only think in religious context and follow the teachings and dogmatic creed of a religion, your politics is going to be based on fear and hatred because you don't have the sense of peace or love to reach out and have, well, a discerning ability. So the only place where discernment can come from is from faith, that personal relationship you have with Christ or with the divine. So that's why religion becomes a problem, because religion isn't about the vision of bringing peace on earth. It's about keeping everyone away from you, protecting you until you die and you can go on to the everlasting life of a heavenly kingdom. But, you know, that's, that's, too, that's too small a thinking. Christ was a big thinker. He really did want you to use the important step of non-judgment and forgiveness to create love in yourself and others so that we can establish peace, at least within ourselves, but also to have peace on earth. That's a goal. And I know that may not even occur to you because your religion doesn't really get to that. It only concerns itself with punishment and afterlife. So if you obey yourself in this life, you'll have this everlasting promise of heaven in the afterlife. And that's sad because you really can have both. If you can break away from your religious narrowness and explore the faithful side of your belief or allow yourself to really experience your faith and let your faith grow and really experience that everlasting depth of love and peace that happens when you connect your soul to your spirit. So therein lies the dilemma. So your actions on a political scale, when you come from a religious perspective, is always going to be rooted in law, order, fear, hatred, that kind of thing. That's why you think in terms of, well, we can't have immigrants coming to this country because they're going to upset or create the possibility of a change in our country. And we can't have, we can't have foreigners 
in our country to risk the chance that the wonderful life that you're living in this country is going to somehow be uh, changed for the worse. But being anti-immigrant is not a Christian value. It's not a value that Christ would want you to embrace. He just wouldn't want you to do that. You're supposed to open yourself up to all people of foreign lands. We have a lot of money. We have a lot of room. We could take care of a lot of people. But your religion blocks your faith. It inhibits your perspective on your faith. You do not trust people, which is wise, but you're not letting your faith make the discerning difference between categorizing everybody as foreigners and dangerous and being discerning enough to know when good people just want a better life and that we have that. And, and as a Christian, you should be more than happy to open your arms up for the immigrants in need. I mean, if we could, if I could find a way to help everybody, it would be great. We could have all the world come to our shores. If they are in a government where they are oppressed and abused and their human rights are denied, you should have a heart. You should have a compassion to want to help those people. But your religion is affecting your politics, and your politics is rooted in fear and hatred. You do not want to risk changing the way things are because you just want to lay low. You want to live your life. I'll, you know, you'll, you're living in that life of obedience. I will obey the laws. I will be and live an orderly life. I will take care of myself as best I can, but I will not help others ever. I will not allow the government to waste my money to help other people. And that's your word. Those are the voices of the religious. A true person of faith, a true person with real values of Christ and the vision of Christ within them is going to have a different perspective. They're going to come from a place of peace and love. They're going to risk opening their arms to bring people in, in a loving and compassionate way to help those that need to be helped. We have much, we have much. This country is rich. But there's so much fear dictating our politics that we are denying ourselves the full expression of our Christian faith, of our Christian relationship with Jesus. So our politics, at least with regards to immigration, should be about love. It should be about compassion. It's supposed to be about wanting this world to live in peace. And if we cannot change or help other countries be better countries be more respective of the people that live there if they don't understand the concept of human rights and generosity and and the spirit of giving and the compassion to want to help then that kind of world peace is not going to happen so maybe the answer would be to have more immigration I don't know what the politics should be, but the politics should never be no. It shouldn't be, I'm too afraid of these people. They look different than I am. I cannot risk them coming into my country. I'm too afraid. Well, you're a Christian. You're supposed to be beyond that. You know we have fear in our hearts. We do. But we also know that that's not the Christian value that you should be embracing. You shouldn't be embracing fear. You should be embracing love, compassion, forgiveness, 
people that live in this country and live under the fear that they're going to be deported. Yes, they came here illegally. Yes, they became productive citizens. Well, not citizens. We can't say that because they're here illegally. So they have to live in this sort of shadow. And they want amnesty. They want to find a path to citizenship because they love this country, because this love because they've worked hard in this country. They've helped raise their children in this country. Their children are safer because they're in this country. But your religion is telling you, you do not want to forgive them for their initial sin of wanting a better life and coming to this country illegally. And I don't understand, where is that faith? Where is your relationship with compassion? Where is that? Why do you not see yourself opening your arms and reaching out and wanting people to help. But what do you do in your political world? The religious side of you says no, no amnesty. If you broke the law, you should be punished or thrown out of this country. And if that's your religion, then it doesn't sound like your faith. It doesn't sound like your value systems or your relationship with Christ. Christ is far more forgiving, far more loving, far more compassionate, and he wants you to be too. So when you stick to a perspective of a religion to be obedient and apply that to your politics, you pull yourself away from the faithful side of your spirit. Your faith is your relationship with the divine. And without that relationship, you cannot be a discerning spiritual player in the divine effort to bring about world peace and spread love and peace. And I know that all sounds just, oh yeah, too impractical and too, yes, that's true. Your faith is bigger than your religion. Your faith believes in the power of the love of Christ to move in ways that don't ever seem possible. And they aren't ever going to be possible if we cannot get the people that are religious to let go of their religious obedience and fear and hatred and start working their faithful side, start developing that relationship with Jesus and become good discerning uh, disciples of Christ, really walking in that loving spirit that Jesus wants for this world. He wants peace on earth. You don't just hide, lay low, and wait till you die and then go to heaven because you got your little ticket to go to heaven. That's not good enough. It might be good enough to get you into heaven, but you can do better than that. You have the power of Jesus in your life and you should be applying it in a faithful way, in a discerning way, in a spiritual way, and not get so caught up in the politics of obedience the politics of fear and hatred. You really cannot do more for yourself than working the faithful side of your belief. Yes, you're right. You have your religion. Your religion has allowed you to order your life. But you're stronger than that. You can risk. You can risk so much more. You have to walk in the four steps. You have to walk in the non-judgment. You can't be judging other people. We're all flawed human beings. We should just know that. It's part of creation. We don't really understand why God made us the way he did, but he did. And that's part of the non-judgment. You're supposed to really not really judge things we can't possibly know. What's the point? And you should accept the reality that, yeah, people do. Uh, walk in judgment all the time. But you're a Christian. You're supposed to step above all that. You're supposed to say to yourself, yes, I get it. 
I will not be judging others just because they're human beings. And in the case of the immigration people, you're not supposed to judge them because they wanted a better life. Of course, that's why they came to this country. And to just walk in that insistence of law and order and say, we will not forgive you, we will not pardon you, we will not give you amnesty, doesn't sound like a Christian to me. You're not walking your faithful side. You've abandoned it. You're stuck purely on your religious, obedient side, your politics of fear and hatred, because you just want to protect what you have, wait till you die, and then go to heaven. That's pathetic. You're better than that. You're much better than that. And you should feel that distinction. Another example of, well, perhaps that's enough for today. I think we will. We talked about the immigration idea and how if you come from a religious perspective, it's going to affect how you act politically, whereas you come from your spiritual side, your faithful side, you're going to have the discerning quality, you're going to have the courage to actually help people who are in need. So your politics will be different because you'll be coming from a place of compassion and love and peace, because that's what you want ultimately. Not just your own peace and your own protection in the afterlife, but you want a world order of peace. And that's not going to come about if you stick to your religious, political obedience line of thinking and start opening yourself up to the spirit, the faithful side, the discerning side of your spirit. Okay, thank you for listening. I have that and I will continue to do my sermons. And uh, by all means, if you want to make any kind of comments, just send uh, an email to monkliving at gmail.com. Monk, M-O-N-K, living, L-I-V-I-N-G, at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. See you soon.